Father God, we just come into your presence with such a grateful heart, thanking you for, for who you are and, and what you've done for us, God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what Jesus purchased for us coming to the earth, dying on the cross. God, we thank you for the authority that he's given us. We thank you for the authority that you've given us in your word, Father God. And God, we just ask you that tonight, your word, your word as your word is ministered, that it, it changes us. God, we thank you that your word is anointed. And we thank you that it has the ability to change the, the very essence of who we are. And God, we ask that tonight that happen. We want to be changed, Father God. We want, to be, we want to be transformed in the image of your dear Son. And we thank you that that begins to happen tonight. I thank you that the word that's read tonight, that the, the, that the word that is ministered tonight, that, it, that it, it delivers, that it sets free, that it illuminates. And we thank you for it. And we, we give you the rest of this evening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Man. Well, tonight, I get to be the cheerleader, Amen. you know, sometimes we, we, and Belinda, I just got to tell you, it is so good to see you, I just can't even, I just for, you know, I'm just going to throw it out there right off the bat, it's just, it's just so good to see you. Um, You know, different people get up and they do different things and, and they minister in different ways and their anointing's different and, you know, I'm the team guy. And all I know how to do is, is what I do. And I, I don't really do it a whole lot differently for the teens than, than I would do it for anyone else. So tonight, I guess I'm just going to kind of, you know, give it to you guys the way that I'd give it to the teens. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really very simple and I need it all to be broken down and I want it to make sense and, you know, I want to hear the voice of God and I want God to change me and, you know, I just, so we just, you know, we just do what we do and I, I really do feel like I'm more of a cheerleader. I feel like tonight I'm, 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 I'm supposed to encourage you that you need, you need to stay the course. Go ahead and say, stay the course. Stay the course. Yeah, it's, it's good to hear people talk back, like pastor, Pentecostal, from the top of my head to the toes of my feet, Dr. Bill. I, you, there, there's just nothing like, like hearing someone in the congregation talking to you. Amen. I heard a pastor say one time, or a preacher say one time, it's like, it's like saying sick him to a bulldog. You just get all excited. So don't be afraid to, to talk to me. It'll make me. It'll make me feel a little better and maybe make you feel a little better too. But I want to encourage you tonight to stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the, there are things that God has spoken to you. And there are things that God may have spoken things to you years and years and years ago. And God may have spoken things to you yesterday. And it's easy. Tell me, tell me if this is the truth. It's easy when you expect something to happen and it doesn't happen in, in the time that you want it to happen. It's easy to get discouraged. Is this true? Yeah. It's easy. It's easy to get discouraged. That's why the Apostle Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. It's a fight. Yeah. You know, you got to fight. The fight of faith is a fight. It's not easy. It's not easy. How many have learned, like I've learned, that, you know, this Christian life, is, it's more than just wearing a pair of sunglasses and signing autographs. Amen. Right? I mean, we, got, we, we have an active role to play in this. And we've got, to, we've got to play it. We've got to play our part. We've got to do what's required of us. But if, if you're feeling discouraged and you're feeling a little bit like, man, it's taking too long. It's not taking too long. Is that me? Maybe. I just want to encourage you, it's not taking too long. The Spirit of God tonight wants you to know, stay the course, stay strong. Keep doing what you're, what, what you're doing. Keep, you, you keep praying in the Spirit. You keep reading your scriptures. You keep confessing the Word. You keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. You keep doing the fundamental stuff, the basic stuff. Stay the course. God is going to bring to pass the things in your life that He said He would bring to pass. He is faithful, and He is going to do what He said He was going to do. And it's just, I mean, so, so much of it, unfortunately, is up to us. Why? You know, I, I, I'm finding out more and more all the time that what we call the, the word of faith message, this word of faith message, there are a lot of people that don't like the word of faith message. I'm telling you, uh, this is the truth. This is, how, this is how kind of, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? The boy in a bubble. This is, I'm, I'm very protected. I, I didn't realize there were so many people that didn't, that did, I heard the word of faith early, early on. Thank God for my parents who are here tonight. Um, and I, 
it made so much sense to me, and it was so, it was so freeing to me, I did, it never occurred to me that someone wouldn't read it and say, woo you know what I mean? But there are people out there that, that they don't. They, they, there's this, this, this move apparently out there, and I don't, I mean, it's, it's gone on, it's, it's been around for centuries, I guess, but this whole sovereignty of God thing. Yeah. God is sovereign. You know, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. If I sin, then I sin. It's all in God's plan, you know. If I'm sick, I'm sick. It's all in God's plan. God is sovereign. Thank you, Jesus. And hey, you know what? These people love God. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to sound like I'm talking bad about them, but the, their theology is wrong. That's right. Amen. I mean, the book is, is, is crystal clear. There are things that if we're going to get them from God, we have to take them. You've got to reach out and you've got to take them. And it's an act. And it's hard. It's hard work. It's, it, it's a fight. Fight the good fight of faith, Paul said. So I want to encourage you tonight to fight the fight. I saw a, uh, a poster one time. I'm sure people have seen this. Remember those, like in the 80s, they had all those dangling motivational posters that were all, you know, feel-good stuff. Well, I saw one one time that made me smile, and it said, every, every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up and knows that if it doesn't run from the lion, it's going to be eaten. <laughs> and every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up and knows that if it doesn't run faster than the gazelle, it's going to go hungry. <laughs> yeah. So every morning in Africa, whether you're a gazelle or a lion, Hit the ground running. <laughs> I like it. And that's how we, I think that's how we have to live this Christian life, this, this life of faith. You know, you can, you can spend three hours today doing your confessions and reading scriptures and nebata, C, D, 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 K, praying in the spirit in the morning. Yesterday, that doesn't count. Because yeah. the devil is out there. Now, I'm, I'm not going to take that and use it as a parallel to the devil because that doesn't work. But we do have that, that image of the devil, right? And Peter, roaming as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Hey, the day that you wake up and you feel like, I'm, I'm too tired, I'm not going, I'm not going to do it today. I'm not, I'm not quoting my scriptures today. It, I just, it's too, hey, and by the way, I've woken up and done that. <laughs> It takes time. It takes energy. Oh, they same scriptures. I read them every day. And I got prayer cards. Little cards with scriptures on them. Read them over and over and over. Some days you feel like, I just don't... Uh, God, you know my heart. That's the day the devil sneaks up on you. That's the day he comes and he starts chewing at your feet. And now all of a sudden, now suddenly you're looking back and now you got, now you got to make up time. Amen. Right? Amen. right. Now, now we, we open up to 1 Peter 2.24 and we start reading in earnest. Oh, God. Because <coughs> the devil's coming. So it's today. Today, wake up in the morning and hit the ground running. Yeah. It doesn't, yesterday doesn't count. We're glad you spent extra. You can't, you can't do extra time on Monday to take off till Wednesday. You know? <laughs> I'm going to pray for an hour and ten minutes today and I'll be able to take it easy tomorrow. No, 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 no. Today is the day. We got to do it today. I know in my own life, every time I've gotten in trouble, every time things don't go the way I think they're supposed to be going, I don't say God is sovereign. I say, I, I better change something. <laughs> right? And as much as, you know, hey, we'd like to blame it on the church down the street or our spouse, oops, or our kids or our goofy in-laws or whoever it is, we can't, because it all, it all, it comes down to us. Galatians 6 tells us not to be weary in well-doing. In due season, you'll, we'll reap if we faint not. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in well-doing. And I think probably the only guy that... that enjoys Keith more and more than I do might be Dr. Bill. I mean, I, I, I just, I can't, I heard him say one time, he read that scripture and he said, when is due season? And just like this, it was quiet everywhere. And he said, it's always longer than you want it to be. <laughs> You'll reap in due season if you faint not. You'll reap in due season if you faint not. But we've got to resist the devil. We have to resist him. The key is we've got to resist him. You have to keep resisting him. There are going to be times in your life when you will say, it doesn't look like it's working. And hey, you know what? What you're believing for hasn't happened yet. So it hasn't, it hasn't in the natural worked. Do you understand what I'm saying? If where you're at is not working, yeah. we have to, we, there are two reasons why. One, we're in the middle of a fight, and we haven't come to the end of it. 
Yeah. Just keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep marching. Because the, the book says if you resist, he'll flee. So if he's not going, you haven't resisted long enough. That's right. Okay? Or you quit. You quit. You just quit. You quit resisting. You quit believing. You quit quoting. You quit reading. You quit praying. Hey, I'm talking to me tonight, right? In my life, where, where, this is, where, where I've gone wrong, this is where I've gone wrong. Because it's a fight of faith. It's a fight of faith. And so we might as well just talk about some fundamental stuff, since that's basically all I know. Right? The teens are like, again, Greg, again, please. <laughs> But we've got, we, we have to keep fighting. We, we have to keep fighting. We have to keep doing. We have to keep going. And I'll tell you what, the devil, when you let up, the devil will get in. That's, and he gets into your mind. The devil will play with your mind, and he will say to you, are you kidding me? It's been two weeks. It has been two months. It has been two years. It's been two decades, whatever the number is. Yeah. He'll say to you, wherever you are, he'll play with you. And your mind will say, it has been a long time. I don't know, maybe, what if, I know God can, but is he going to? And you start all of this stuff. And this is where the devil gets in, gets in and starts playing mind games. And he will do that. In Ephesians, we're, we're, we're warned of the wiles in the King James, the wiles of the devil. And that Greek word wiles, it means schemes. Anyone remember wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner? All of his schemes and all of his traps and all of his tricks. That's the way the devil is. But he only has one way in. It's, it's your mind. It's all these mind games that he plays. That's why, we're, that's why the Apostle Paul said, ah, you have got to take in a, in, into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Because he'll, he'll come in and he'll whip you if, as soon as you let your guard down and he says to you, to, and gets you to a place to where you believe, you know what, I'm not doing my scriptures today. I'm not going to spend the time doing it. That's, that's when the guard comes down and that's when he can enter in. So we just can't. I mean, as tempting as it is, we've just got to keep fighting the fight. And hey, we're not a... You know, we, we look at the Bible and we look at pictures of the disciples and these guys, you know, until they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Maybe, maybe everyone reads the Gospels differently than I do. But I mean, they're on a boat, right? Jesus is asleep. Jesus just said to them, we're going to the other side. And a storm comes up. And we all think, oh, they're wimps because the storm came. No, some of these guys were fishermen. They lived in the, in the sea. I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you really, really felt like, I, I might die here? A car accident, you fell down. I mean, something where that panic, that the adrenaline kicks in, and you think, I, I really might die. This is how these men were feeling. And they go down and they get Jesus, and they say to him, Master, do you not care? We're going to die. It wasn't like, Master, we're a little afraid. You know, we read this scripture, and it's not, I don't think we do it justice. These men who, who were sea-bearing men, sea, sorry, sea-faring men, they were terrified. And Jesus, the way I read it, he doesn't give it one of these, okay, I've got this one, I'll get up. In my mind's eye, he wakes up and he rolls his eye at him, his eyes at him, like, you got to be kidding me. And the reason I think that is because he gets up and goes to the bow of the boat and says, Peace! Be still! And everything calms down. And he looks at the disciples and doesn't say, It's okay, guys. Yeah. I got it. He looks at him and says, Why do you have such little faith? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's not very nice. I don't think Jesus is very loving to talk like that to people. <laughs> He was trying to get them to be able to reach out and get something from God for themselves. He's teaching them. He's saying, how, how long am I going to be with you? They get to the other side and all kinds of stuff happens. And the guy with the demoniac comes up to Jesus and says, uh, dude, I had your disciples pray for my kid and nothing happened. And I can see Jesus going, <laughs> bring him here. Okay, bring him here, bring him here. Cast the devil out of him, talks to the father. Later on, the disciples are bright enough to say, uh, Jesus, why, didn't we, why weren't we able to do it? And he said, because of your unbelief. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're going to tell me faith isn't important? Yeah. Hey, if it's in red letters, that trumps everything. Yeah. You, can, you can twist around what Paul has to say and make it. But if it's red, because of your unbelief, you did not receive from God because of your unbelief. Oh. And who likes to hear that? No, these, these disciples, in fact, I'm just going to read this to you real quick. I can, I can find it. And Mark. Mark 16, 15. Jesus has died on the cross. He was put in the tomb. He went to hell. He ascended into heaven. And now he's back like he said he was going to be. He had just told his disciples, I'm, I'm coming back. Okay? We got work to do. Stay with me. Are you with me? <laughs> stay here, guys. Boys, stay here. I'm coming back. And he walks into the room, and they're, they're reclining at the table, it says. And it says in verse 14, or after, it's 14. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. The disciples, Jesus had told them, I'm coming back. And he's, he's, they're, they're laying at the table, eating and crying. What are we going to do now? He's gone. I was expecting such great things. I thought God was going to do some stuff. And he walks in the door, and there's no high-fiving. Yeah. There's no, dude, I'm back. I told you. I told you I was coming back. You're not going to believe what I just did. No, what did he say? He reproached them immediately. He opened the door and said, I can't believe you guys didn't believe me. Right. Where is your faith? I'm sure Jesus is thinking, <laughs> I'm laying everything in these guys' hands. I can relate to that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> these disciples saying, Lord, I believe. Ugh, help my unbelief. <laughs> we want to believe. We want to believe, right? We want to believe. And it's, it's so hard, and especially, you know, growing up in a Word of Faith church or being in a Word of Faith church, we know all the right things to say. Yeah. And so in our heart, we, we might be, in our heart, we might be thinking, I hope God does this, while we're saying, by his stripes, I was healed. Yeah. And we, we've got to get out of that. We have to break through that. Because it's our unbelief that's going to stop God from moving in our lives. It doesn't come down anywhere else. It doesn't come down to, to anything else. I tell the teens all the time, you, you have got to, every day, you have got to be in, in the Bible, and you've got to be reading the scriptures that build you up, and you have to pray in the Spirit. Let's start there. But every day, you've got to do this. And if you'll do this, your spirit man will grow, your faith will increase, you'll be able to hear the voice of God more clearly, and you'll be able to, you'll believe what the book says. And I'll tell you what, I don't know what the percentage is, but I know it's high. We, we don't believe all the Bible all the time. I'll prove it to you. And I know this, is, this sounds harsh in a Word of Faith church, but I'll prove it to you. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? Mark 16, 15. He that believes will be saved. He that does will be damned. These signs will follow them to believe. In my name, and he goes on and lists. Speak in new tongues, drink any deadly thing that will not ha harm them, and though you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Why is it every time we see someone sicker in a wheelchair, we don't lay hands on them? If I believed 100% that I'm laying my hands on you and you're standing up out of the wheelchair, I'm telling you I'd be looking for wheelchairs. Right? Right? Is this true? I mean, why is, can we be honest, church? Yeah. I mean, we might as well. And we can, here, here's the beautiful part of this, we can get there. And there are, di there are people that are very strong in different parts of their faith. There, there are people that they believe God financially, and they, they couldn't doubt God if they wanted to. There are people that believe it for healing like that. There are people that they know that God's going to heal. They, they couldn't doubt if they wanted to. Their, their faith has just been so built up in that for years and years and years. Maybe you know Dr. Bill. I know Pastor would know this guy's name. It may have been Co, but I'm not sure. Back in, I want to say, the 30s or 40s, there was a, an evangelist who had an enormous healing ministry. Enormous. And he ended up backsliding, fell away from God. In the end of his life, I think he had, a, like, crippling arthritis, but I'm not sure if that's what it was. But he was in a wheelchair. And apparently, he also became an alcoholic. During that time in his life, 
there were people that still brought sick to him and he would pray for them and they were healed. Yeah. Why? Because the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Right. The gifts and the calling of, don't you start judging because it doesn't look like the way it's, uh, it should look. Hey, the man wasn't, the man, the man was wherever he was. I'm not, I'm not his judge. But he was crippled in a wheelchair because he didn't do what God told him to do and he was drinking. This, this we know. This part of the story I know, and I can't remember the guy's name. And I do know that he laid hands on people and they were healed, documented cases. Why? Because he knew. He believed that if he laid his hands on them, God was going to heal this person, even in his, the state that he was in. We can believe God. We can get to a place to where our faith is built up like that. But it's, it's not, believing alone is not enough. We have to do more than, than just believe. Um, and I have... A handful of things that I call faith must-haves. It's like a checklist. And I know in my life, every time I feel like it's not happening the way that I, I, I need it to happen, these are the things that I check that work hand in hand with faith. And we've got to, we've got to take it, we have to be honest enough with our own self and our lives and say, if it's not working, there's a reason. And I want it to work. I mean, we love God. We know that God gave us these gifts. But we have to say, if, if, if it's not working, I need to change something. Yeah. I, I, I've, got to, I've got to change something. And this is how we grow. This is how we go from glory to glory to glory. And so these are what, what I call my, our, our faith, our faith must-haves. Number one, Romans, and let's just read some of these scriptures real fast. Um, Romans 10, 17. Does anyone know this scripture? Amen. Faith comes from hearing. Now, by the way, I, I, I'm reading out of the NASB, which, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Bill, I've heard people say that this is like the, the closest translation to the, the Greek that there is. Is that true or debatable? It's somewhat debatable, but we can talk about it. It's good, it, it, but it's good anyway. <laughs> okay, well, this, this translation says this. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing the word of Christ. And I, I read another translation that said the words concerning Christ. And the King James says, faith comes from hearing, and hearing the word of God. But we need to be hearing the word. And I do believe words, the words concerning Christ. We, I, I know in my own personal life, when I read the genealogies and the law in Leviticus, it doesn't do as much for my faith as when I'm reading about Jesus healing the centurion's daughter. So, I'm not, hey, all scripture is profitable. I'm not denigrating or saying anything. All I'm saying is, if I want my faith to be built up, I'm reading the words concerning Jesus. What Jesus did through the disciples and what the Holy Spirit did through the Apostle Paul and reading those stories. I hear stories about Peter walking down the street and people bringing sick people into the street just in hopes that his shadow touches them so they'll be healed. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, you start reading these stories and these scriptures, and it has on the inside. Your faith gets built up. You get more excited. You know, it's just so. I mean, it's faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. <clears throat> but I'll, but let's let's be specific. There are there are a lot of promises and a lot of scriptures in the Bible. If you're believing God for something, if you're believing God for healing, let's open up to First Peter two twenty four. Let's open up to Isaiah fifty three. Let's start reading these scriptures over and over and over. Let them get down inside of us, right? Well, one of the things that we need to do, what we have to do on a daily basis is build our faith. Every day. Every day we have to build our faith. Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. The other thing in James, um, James told us that praying in the Holy Spirit will build up our most holy faith. So every day we know we need to be praying in the Spirit and we need to be reading the word. We need to be hearing the word. We need to be speaking the word, which is the second faith must have on my list. If we're going to, to, as a checklist, see where we are in faith, speaking faith, faith always speaks faith, and we have to be speaking faith. Romans 4.17 said, in fact, let's turn to it, since we're, we're real close to that. I'm guessing that if I do this, that's going to turn on. Yeah. Kind of aim it up there. Bottom left? Bottom button. Bottom button. Well, how do you? 
Lower energy. I can probably do it without it anyway. Just, but if you could turn that on, that would be. I've got this glare, and it's. Uh huh. Wasn't me. <laughs> All right. That's okay. We we can do it. I'll do it like this. Hey. All right. Romans four seventeen. As it is written, a father of many nations have I made you, in the presence of him who he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. And we're exhorted to do that. Call those things into being that do not exist. Call into being those things that do not exist, just like our father did. We're told to imitate God, and we have the ability to call into being those things that do not exist. Is there something that God has spoken to your heart? Is there something that you feel like I am going to do? God's going to use me. I'm going, this is where I need, and it doesn't have, I'm not even talking like ministry stuff. There's, there's stuff that God has told you you need to be doing. You need to be, and it could be, it could be business stuff. You, you need to spend time calling that into being. Yeah. Yeah. God did. Yeah. And God said, let there be light. Yeah. And we're instructed to do it. Call it into being. Yeah. Speak it into being. Faith, faith speaks. Faith always speaks. We have to every day be building our faith, reading the word, praying in the Holy Spirit. We also have to be speaking faith. Hebrews 10.23 says, and we hold fast to our confession of faith. We hold fast to our confession of faith. And in second, I love this scripture too. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to go to verse 13. But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak. If you believe, you, you will speak. I believe, therefore I speak. I believe, therefore I speak. So if there's something that God has spoken to your heart, let it come out of your mouth. Speak it. People around you should get tired of hearing what, you're, what God's telling you. Like, oh my goodness, here, here comes Greg. He's going to talk again. He's going to talk about what God's going to do. You know, all, and, and hey, by the way, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say that. I, I'll talk about me. I know that I don't do it nearly enough. I don't spend enough time speaking the things into existence, speaking the things that God has spoken to my heart. We need to spend time meditating, muttering these things, speaking them out loud, because that's the, the well, first of all, we're instructed to do it in Scripture. So, you know, we don't really need another reason, do we? Yeah. But, but, but it works. It's, it's the way God set the whole system up. And if there's, if there's a process that we're supposed to follow, like a recipe, yeah. well, let's follow it. Yeah. Let's follow the recipe. If we'll follow the recipe, we're going to turn around in our life and say, oh, look what God has done. Yeah. And that's where we want to be. That's where I want to be, anyway. Number three on my, my, my top six for faith, faith must-haves is acting in faith. And we're going to turn to James. We haven't gone too long yet, have we? Yeah. All right, just check it. <laughs> James chapter 2 and I'm going to start in 17 even so faith if it has no works is dead being, itself, being by itself but someone may well say you have faith and I have works show me your faith without the works and I'll show you my faith by my works you believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe. Do you, do you see, see the, how James is being a little, uh, a little smart? <laughs> I love it. I love the, oh, you believe the demon. Yeah, okay, great. Or you, or you, you, yeah, you, let me read it again before I mess it up. You believe that God is one. Yo, you believe God is one? Good. Good for you. The demons believe. Great. Big deal. The demons also believe and shudder. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Yeah. Uh, this one should be, be hi highlighted and starred on the list. Faith without works, the King James says, is dead. The version of the Bible that I love so much says useless. 
Faith without works is useless. Faith without works is useless. So does that mean that I can spend time building my faith, but if I don't act on it, nothing's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what that means. We, we have to act on our faith. I've heard stories, and I'm sure many of you have too, of Smith Wigglesworth. He would get up on the platform, or I, I, well, let me say it like this. I heard that at least one time he did this, and he walked back and forth on the platform for 20 minutes. And what he said was, faith is an act. Faith is an act. Faith, listen, faith is an act. Faith, faith is an action. Yeah. Faith, faith is an act. 20 minutes. Could you listen to that for 20 minutes? Well, hopefully they got it. Because faith without works is useless. No wonder my faith isn't working. Because what does faith do? Faith acts. If you believe God told you to do something, or wants you to do something, and you look around and say, well, I can't. You, you gave a great example of this this morning, Dr. Bill. I, I, I don't have the money. I don't have the means. I, 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 can't, I can't do it. If I could, I would. N no, faith acts. Yeah. And that may be picking up the phone. It may, it, well, depending on what the situation is, it could be anything. But you need to act and you need to start to make that happen in a way, in a place when it looks like it's never going to happen. This cannot happen. Hey, that's what God loves that stuff anyway. We get way out there and, and everyone knows Greg couldn't do this. Dr. Bill's not going to go. He, he can't do this by himself. And all of a sudden it's done. Yeah. And all of a sudden we got, we're in 900 households. This is crazy. This is just, it's, you, you gotta, you, I just, I, I, you just, you gotta love God. Yeah. But see, he blesses this obedience. We have to be obedient. We have, our actions have to be obedient to what he's told us to do. We have to be obedient. The Old Testament says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, that's right. It's better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We have to obey. And in that obedience, there is action that has to happen. Action. With, faith is dead without action. We have to be obedient to the Word of God and to what God has spoken to us. Listen to this. I walked into a meeting one time. There was a preacher that I know that was doing a set of a, a, a series of meetings in Manhattan. And I was traveling Manhattan at the time. And he said, hey, Greg, listen, I've got meetings going on. Why don't you come to one of my meetings? And I said, I'd love to. I'm going to be in the city. I, I'd love to come to one of the meetings. And it was, you know, somewhere downtown in a you know, Best Western conference room. And I'm late, you know, sorry. <laughs> I tried, you know, traffic and, you know, Manhattan. But I, I can hear him preaching and the door is closed. And I walk in and the room is empty except for the preacher. Amen. The man is preaching to an empty room. Well, now he's not, I'm there. I sat down. We're, we're 15, 20 minutes into it. He's preaching the way I am. And he's looking at empty seats, preaching. Amen. And so after the service, I'm feeling a little funny, you know. <laughs> he just was preaching to an empty room. And he said, hey, you want to go out and get a cup of coffee? And I said, yeah, I'd love to. You know who I'm talking about. He always wants to go out for a cup of coffee after he preaches. Want to go get a cup of coffee? Yeah, I'd love to. So we go to Starbucks, and I just said to him, does that happen a lot? And he looked at me and said, with these you know, piercing eyes, what? what? <laughs> and now I feel like an idiot for asking. <laughs> but I'm there, you know? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I said, well, when I, when I, when I walked in, <laughs> there was no one there. I said, I, I, I'm not saying it was wrong. I'm just saying if it were me, I would have been like, got a free night. <laughs> all right, let's go. And he looked at me and said, Greg, all I know is this. God told me to have these meetings, to come here and to preach. Amen. And if no one shows up, I'm going to come here and I'm going to preach because I'm going to obey God. That's right. Amen. Well, you feel like slinking out under the door of Starbucks after that, you know. 
Oh, it's no good. That's great. <laughs> but there's something about being obedient. We've got, we need to be obedient. And, and that obedient, we, that action, has, we've got to have it in our lives. We, if it looks foolish, if it looks stupid, if it looks impossible, we've got to act. We have got to act on what we believe. Uh, the ne- number four in, my, in the greatest hits list of the six, we need to be thinking in faith every day. So every day we're building our faith, every day we're speaking faith, every day we're acting in faith, and every day we need to be thinking in faith. Yeah. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, go ahead, say it. So is he. So is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. For out of the abundance of the heart flow the issues of life. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart. So here it is. The stuff that we have in our heart, we have to be thinking and meditating on all the time. We have to be thinking about it and rehearsing it all the time, over and over and over and over. The more that we think about it and the the more that we visualize what God has spoken to us and where we need to be, the more it becomes real to us. When it becomes real to us, we start speaking about it, we start believing it, and when we're believing God and we're acting on what He has said to us, because we believe it, because we've spent so much time meditating on it, that's when all of a sudden all of these pieces start to fall together, and we turn around and say, look, look at what He did. Look at what God did. But we've got to reach out and take it. Every day. Well, there's things that we can do every single day to get to the place that God wants us to be. And we've got to do it every, every single day. We need to spend time thinking every single day about the, about the, well, first of all, we, we, we think about Scripture. We think about things that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us, dreams that God has put in your heart. God's put dreams in your heart. Yeah. We're going to be doing this. I, I'm going to do this. You know, the, the, the Bible says that, that um, Bill, you'll, you'll remember the Scripture, or Dad, you will, someone will. Um, oh, no, what is the Scripture? Hang on a second. Um, that God gives us the desires of our heart. Yeah. And for so long, especially in the 80s, when you ever heard, you heard someone preach that, that meant if you desired a Mercedes, you got one. Yeah. No, no one, I never heard anyone really preach. No, that means the things, the desires that, God, that, that you have on the inside of your heart, God has put them there. God has put those desires there. So if, if you have a desire to do amazing things on the internet like Dr. Bill talked about this morning, well, th- that's, God gave him that desire. That's why, you know, the lights on, on your dashboard don't light up when he starts talking about the traffic and, you know, IP addresses and, you know. Testing. Whoa, whoa. All right. It is hot. I think it was Shambach. Was that, he used to like to get his mics real hot. I heard a story. I didn't see this. I heard a story one time. Someone was, was in a meeting where he was preaching. And he said, son, son, in the, in the sound room, turn this mic up. And he said the, the room was like shaking. Turn it up. Turn it up. I'm going to come back and turn it up myself if you don't turn it up. <laughs> Kids like shaking, okay, I'll turn it up. I, yeah, it's loud. It feels, yeah. Mm, I see why you like that. <clears throat> All right, number five. If we are going to have our faith functional in our life, which we, we want it to be functional, right? We... You know, if we can believe God and we believe God and we do believe God and we have faith, we might as well work, right? We need to walk in love. Turn to Galatians, chapter 5. Oh, I'm going the other way.
Galatians 5, verse 6, for in Christ Jesus, you know, let me, let's go back to 5. For though, we, for, excuse me, for we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. Our faith works through love. Now, watch this. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Who would have thought 1 Corinthians 13 was going to have anything to do with my faith effectively getting me to receive God, anything from God? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, Love is patient, love is kind, it's not jealous, does not brag, is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wronged suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices when the truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. Now that list, that's an intense list. When you go through this list and you read this, if you can't find somewhere where you're missing it, you better person than I am. I, and this is the truth. I put this thing up on, up on the, my bathroom wall. Where is, I'm going to have to ask Regina where that is. It's not there right now. I think I moved it into the office. But it, on the bathroom wall, and I, I substituted my name where it says love. And every day, read this. Greg is patient. Well, you know, already. Right? <laughs> All right? I'll tell you the truth. You, you do this for a week, a month, two months, three months, a year, you, you'll be amazed at how things don't bother you the way they used to bother you. I, it, I mean, it's amazing. So I'll just say every day, Greg is patient. Greg is kind. I'm not jealous. Greg does not brag. Greg's not, I'm not arrogant. Greg does not act unbecomingly. Does not seek my own. I'm not provoked. I do not take into account a wrong suffered. Man. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Greg bears all things. Greg believes all things. Greg hopes all things. Greg endures all things. Greg never fails. Amen. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, you, know, you, you understand, that's what I do. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you should, and I'm not, you know. See, I almost got arrogant and started bragging right there. <laughs> Darn it, and I missed it again. <laughs> See how easy it is? Faith is a fight. We got to fight. Right. You got to fight to do it right. I mean, if it's easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. Everyone would do it. Everyone would be raising sick folk up everywhere they go. We'd be raising the dead. No one would have a financial problem. We'd be, we'd be preaching to the lost. There wouldn't be any more lost. Amen. It's a fight. We have to fight. And this love walk, oh, saints, the, Faith works through love. It works through love. Without action, my faith is useless. And without my love walk being in fact, in, in, intact, my faith is useless. We have so much work to do. Yeah. I have so much work to do. Thank God he's gracious. Thank God he's merciful. Thank God that he, that he encourages me. You know, that, that, that he pats me on the back for the stuff that I do that's right. I love you, son. I, you, you know, I just, I, you're, this is how I see, this is how I think. I'm like the apostle John. You know, the disciple that Jesus loved. God must love me. I mean, to have messed up as much as I've messed up, and God still wants to use me, and God still wants to bless me, he must love me lots. And I feel like he's just looking at me like, yeah, that's my boy. That's it, yeah, yeah no, he's, he's messed that up. He's going to get that straight, though. That's it. He's, he's all right. He's, 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 he's going in the right direction. Man, I love him. Man, I love him. I just feel like God. Look, and you know what? We should, we should all feel like God looks down at us like that. And he does. I mean, he does. God's heart, it, like, it breaks with love for us. We need to feel that. We need to feel that all the time. But I'll tell you what, we need to get this love walk straight. I mean, it's you know, and everyone always gives the examples about the guy that cuts you off and, you know, your spouse that gets, says something that's ugly or, you know, your, your in-laws or your kids. And then there's hundreds. I mean, there, you name a situation and you can, you, you, you can act ugly in any situation. You can say something that you shouldn't have said, you know. Instead of biting your tongue, you can say something that's going to be just a little bit cutting. Well, you know. So what do we do? We're quick to repent. 
You know what, God, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, have, I, sh I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have acted that way. I'm sorry. I'm patient. I'm kind. I'm not envious. Never do. So you just start telling yourself over and over again, Greg, this is what you are. This is what you're going to become. As soon as we be the quicker we can become that, the quicker we can, we can get that functioning in our life, the more powerful our faith is. And, and, and you know, it's, although it's a lot of work, it's not difficult. It's not hard. Just do the right things. If we'll do the right things, our faith will be released. It'll be, it's like slapping turbo on, on an engine. I mean, it's like, wow. But we just, so many of us, well, so many of us, we're not in a church like this. You know, we're so fortunate to be here with Pastor Ed Taylor as our pastor. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, there just aren't many men of God like him. There just aren't many, there just aren't. There aren't many pastors like him. We're so fortunate to be here. But there's so many people that, that are in churches that don't get this. They, they, they don't get to hear this teaching. They don't get to hear the fundamentals of how, where I can find it and how I can apply it. But we can. And even those of us that, that, that hear it and know it, we still, we still need to work on it. We still, we, we have so much fundamental basic stuff that we need to do. Or I know I do. And I just, I really believe that, that the, the, the Spirit of God wants me tonight just to say, stay the course. That whole stay the course. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. And if you've slacked off on some of this stuff or you forgot about that and all of a sudden you're saying, oh, my love walk. <laughs> Been spending so much time confessing and reading and praying and the, I forgot all about, you know. So we, need, we just need to remind ourselves about this. And lastly, we always need to be in a place where we're quick to forgive. Matthew 11, 25 and 26, uh, Jesus, once again, red letters, which is pretty powerful. Jesus said, be, be quick to forgive so your Father in heaven will forgive you. Yeah. Well, yeah, we want, I want that. <laughs> right? I, I want to be forgiven for all the stuff that I've messed up. I, I have to be. So I, I need to forgive those that, that have offended me or angered me or done something to me so I can pick up the book and quote 1 John 1, 9. Knowing that he, that he, God, is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thank God. But if I'm harboring unforgiveness, I'm just, I'm, these are the things that we can do that will shut the door. Shut the door to our faith working. And we need our faith to work. God needs for our faith to work. We need to be growing in faith. We need to be getting better and better. Because if we can get, if I can get Greg believing God for socks, and all of a sudden I know God's going to supply any, all the socks I ever need, now I can start believing for something bigger. And the washer and dryer breaks, and that's okay. God's going to supply. And all of a sudden God does supply. And all of a sudden, I don't have a car, and that I, I, I need another car. And all of a sudden, a car is supplied. And all of a sudden, you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you are believing God, and you're growing in your faith. And we're working on ourselves, and we're working on the things that, that we're doing every day. We're praying in the Spirit. We're reading the Word. We're confessing. We're walking in love, and we're getting better at it every day. We're speaking the Word, and we're acting in faith. And we're growing in our faith, and we're marching arm in arm. Pretty soon, we're not believing God to meet our needs. Pretty soon, we're marching down the street, and we're taking land. Pretty soon, we're believing God for greater Greensboro. Pretty soon, we're believing God for the building that we need, because we, pastor can't do six services a Sunday anymore. Yeah. Right? 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 The, this, is, this is why we, we, need, we need to start growing in our faith. I, I encourage the teens all the time, get a faith project. Something that you're just going to believe God for. Just whatever it is. You pray about it and you believe God for it. And every day you thank God it's coming to pass. So, have, so, so, so get a faith project. And if your life's anything like mine, it shouldn't be hard to find one. <laughs> yeah, we got all kinds of stuff we can believe God, that we are believing God for. And God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. Right? Amen. He's going to bring that thing to pass that he promised. Right. He's going to do it. We just have to do our part. That's all. And is it work? It is work. It's a fight. 
But that's okay. We're going we're, we're gonna to get there. We're going to get right to where God wants us to be. Father God, once again, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the opportunity to come and share your word tonight. And I just ask that the devil not be able to take any of this word as, it, as people go forth, that there's not anything that's going to have been confusing, that he's not going to be able to you know, mess with the minds of the people that have heard and are hearing this. God, I thank you that once again, your word is changing us from the inside out. I thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.